Okay, I'm down here in the shop. I'm building a jet boat, an aluminum jet boat. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to take me nine months, I expect, to do it. But I want to talk to you about a Bible prophecy that, that's so current right now. Many people are talking about it. You see people on YouTube that are not Bible students getting all excited because they're seeing some similarities between this prophecy of Gog and Magog and Persia and Turkey, invasion of Israel and the destruction of those nations on the mountains north of Jerusalem, north of Israel. And uh, they're all excited saying, this is gonna be the fulfillment of this prophecy. No, it's not. What's taking place right now is not a fulfillment of Ezekiel 38 and 39. And I'm gonna go up to the office and show you from the scriptures. So let's go, let's look at that. Okay, here we are in the office, and uh, we're going to talk about this Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, I, I used to teach what I'd been taught, what I heard, what I read in books, until a few years ago I did a very thorough study on this subject. And Ezekiel 38 and 39, I covered it in this little book called The Prophecy of Metgog in Israel. Now, the issue is we have Gog and Magog pre chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, it says, invading Israel in the last days, it says, and is assisted by five entities. Persia is one of them, which we know is Iran. Libya is another, which is Egypt and then Libya over from Israel. And Libya has been notoriously Muslim and anti-Israeli. And then you have, uh, Gomer, and that's that's really the important one we're going to come to. And then you have uh, Ethiopia. Now, Ethiopia, if you go to North Africa, it's, it's go down to Egypt, and then you go over a couple countries, and then you're in Ethiopia on the uh, border there of Northern Africa. And so Ethiopia has been a, uh, an enemy of Israel. Uh, so now, what's interesting is these five nations that it mentions, at the time the prophecy was made, Libya and Ethiopia were not enemies of Israel. Uh, Persia was, but and then Gomer was not an enemy of Israel as such at the time. So the prophet picked out five nations out of a hundred it could have picked that still exist today. It could have picked out nations that existed at that time, like the Philistines, like the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, uh, nations that were traditionally enemies of Israel that surrounded them there, but it ignored those nations. Now, if had it picked those, it'd be a problem because they don't exist anymore. But the prophet picked out four nations and a people group that still all exist today, and four of them at least, and a part of the fifth one, are enemies of Israel right now. That's why so many people think that this prophecy is maybe being fulfilled right now with this war in Israel with Gaza and, and um, Lebanon and Persia, Iran, and maybe some Russian involvement in Syria. So they think they see it, they see it some similarity and say, okay, this is it. Well, no way is this prophecy was 38 and 39, a prophecy of being fulfilled right now. Now, I got Ezekiel 38 and 39 here. I have to put it on large text because I can't read it in the Bible with the small text. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. Now, I'll just tell you in short, that's Caucasian descendants of Japheth. The world is divided into Shem, Ham, and Japheth people groups from the flood. The Japhetic people groups are the Caucasian that go from Russia, Europe, Britain, United States, Australia, New Zealand, all of those Caucasian so-called white people's groups. That is the Japhetic people groups. Now you say, how do we know that? Well, we can go down to the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verse 2. Now he's talking about the three people groups. He said, the son of Japheth 
is Gomer. That's what he names up here, Meshach and Tubal, Gomer. And Magog, okay, Magog is a descendant of Jephthah. See, Magog is not a country. Uh, Gomer is not a country, it's a people group. And Medea and Javan and Tubal, there it is, Gomer, Tubal, as he mentions in this prophecy, is a descendant of Japheth, and Meshach and Tyrus. So when he speaks of Israel being invaded from the north quarters and a whole band with him, he's speaking of an alignment of Japhetic people groups which would include the United States, Britain, Russia, Germany, all of those Japhetic people, Ireland, England, Spain, France, all those European nations are the Japhetic people groups. Now, in Revelation 20, verse eight, we read, Gog and Magog, which is are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to get them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand and the sea. So in the book of Revelation, we have a reference to this Gog and Magog. And it says, where does Magog, Gog and Magog dwell? Not Russia. He said, the four quarters of the earth are gathered together to battle. So these five nations that go with Gog and Magog to battle are not five Arabic nations led by Russia. It's five Arabic nations that have joined the Japhetic nations and are involved in a battle down there close to Israel and the last minute decide just to go in and conquer Israel. There's a host of details in 38 and 39 Ezekiel, that when you compare them to today, you realize it has nothing to do with what's going on right now. Now, we'll say this, what you see taking place in Israel is creating an alignment that's going to issue into a fulfillment of this prophecy. But this prophecy is fulfilled when these Celtic people, Gauls, Britons, and Irish, Western European nations, uh, all come down into the Middle East area with in alignment with five Muslim nations on some mission that has nothing to do with Israel. You'll see that in the text. And at the last minute, they think, well, Israel is now, they said, dwelling peacefully in the land. <laughs> that couldn't be said right now of Israel. And they say, hey, let's go down and take a spoil from Israel while we're here. And so they suddenly attack Israel. It results in fire from God coming down and destroying these nations. And as a result of that, the Israelis take seven months to cleanse the land of the dead bodies that God leaves there. And after that, they hire men of continual employment and it takes seven years, which reaches into the great tribulation. And that's all explained here in the text. Won't go into it any further, but if you want the details on that, you can get this little book, that uh, The Prophecy of Israel, Gog and Magog. <clears throat> I go into the history of it. I go into genetics. I go into the details on it. Now, also, this uh, book of Revelation I did years ago, I painted this picture of the book of Revelation. It's in great detail. And there is an accompanying book that goes with it that explains all of that, complete with beautiful artwork. So get, get that if you want. Make great gift for someone, too. And don't forget our Facebook, which just came out. It is a, a hardback, beautifully done, great artwork by my granddaughter. And uh, she's, what, about 15 years old, I think. But she's on her way to being a great artist. So I'm going to get back to building my aluminum jet boat because this is, uh, what is this, November? And come next uh, April or May, I'd like to be out on the waters tearing it up. So I'm going to go back to work.